Hey, good morning. I'm making progress around here. I'm down to one machine in the building here that needs attention. This, this old axle soon is uh, all fixed up and working. And uh, this is the one that's getting attention now. There's a few things I got to do to it. I got an oil leak in the knee I got to fix. That's not going to be real easy, but shouldn't be too bad. And I'm aligning things on it just like you have to do on a lathe or any old machine you pick up. <laughs> I'll show you where I'm at here if I can get this hooked up okay. I hope you're all doing good. I've got this uh, dividing head on here. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a terrible cold. It's really kind of knocked me down a bit here. But I'm getting this aligned up. Oh, this is another cool old antique um, Lufkin surface gauge with a Lufkin indicator that uh, hooks on to the scribe. Works good for this. And it's got the pins. I have another one of these that's got a Starrett indicator on it with a shorter post. But see, I can put this on here and uh, set it to zero and check the alignment here. And it's within two thousands. But I got to check the uh, run out on the end. The center, the tail center is not connected yet. There. So how much run out we got? Just about two that whoa three thousands. Let's see if I can get that a little bit better. I'm just gonna give it a little tap here. Uh, right at two. I think that's the best I can get. So that's a high spot there. I'm going to rotate it 90. And it should be in a good spot to read it this way. So it's got to go this way a little bit. I can tap on it. Got a little bit of play in the key, right? But I want to get this so it uh, just a little bit more. Oh. See how that looks. Adjust it back. There, it's within a thousandth. That's so good, and I can walk it down there. And I got the, the height is good. So now I'm going to fiddle with that tailstock, and uh, we'll try another angle with the camera. Well, this is one of those uh, small things that did take a few hours to get done. But now I can uh, put things in this dividing head and uh, this uh, aftermarket <laughs> uh, footstock and uh, have them run within a thousandth of an inch as can be seen on this antique Lufkin surface gauge and junior indicator. <laughs> so that's done. Now I'm going to make arbors and things. I've got this um, um, Bostar import collet truck on there that works quite well. It runs true.
It's running uh, better than a half thousandth. Um, and I can put a three draw chuck and I got a six draw chuck I can uh, take off, put on here. But I can take this off and use the taper in the head. And I need to make some arbors uh, to make some stuff on. I want to make a ratcheting type uh, 24 index plate for that Herrick air spindle is one of the things I want to make. Uh, on this. So anyway, I've got uh, more to do on this, on this machine, and uh, I'll kick on the camera when I can. Okay. I'm still a little hoarse and choking and coughing from the cold I've had, but it's getting a lot better. So this mill here is uh, something they did for a very short time during uh, World War II. And uh, this uh, sliding vertical head, see I got it up out of the way, uh, is driven by a spline shaft that I've got over there. And uh, then you can replace it with the horizontal arbor. And then it's got an adapter here. This was missing, and so I made one. And I uh, got it aligned. It's got a bushing in there, and you can use a uh, light-duty Type A arbor. But because of the configuration, you can see how far it drops down here. So a vise has to sit like this, that way. And uh, this is... Uh, I was looking at the CNC style vise, and this is the best one, just the standard vise here. That's a Kirk vise. Yeah, I thought I'd show you how that is. You see, this part here would uh, interfere here most of the time if you're working close with the smaller cutters. And with the horizontal arbor. And also the cutters on this uh, uh, be cutting against the uh, sliding jaw, but the cutter, uh, the way it's sitting, uh, the cutter can be reversed and uh, the machine and cut the other way. So it <laughs> kind of had some, it, it adds versatility but there's always, you know, you don't gain in one area without losing in another. So if this had a standard yoke, support yoke here, it wouldn't be hanging down so far. It'd only be about like that. So you have less interference problems. There, I get around the other side here. So this is the vertical head here. be driven, this be taken out, and the spline would drive that. Then it can be slid. That's kind of yeah, the unique thing about this. And uh, they replaced this uh, with um, the Brown and Sharp number 20 range master style with the sl sliding head mills. And those are really rare too, like omniversals. And when you do find them, they're usually totally worn out. But they took this idea uh, uh, a bit further. So, but anyway, for just repair work and uh, the stuff that I, that I want to do, this, this is fine and it's great that I can switch from horizontal to vertical. Okay, I think I got another video I could patch in um, aligning stuff here and uh, I'll be back with something. Okay, this about the uh, the most sturdy way that I could come up with to mount this vise in this position. You can see it kind of over the bolt hole overhangs. You can't uh, use that one. So I got it clamped on the ends using this one. Regular mount. And then I got two clamps here, back in there. And let's let's check this thing out for deflection. 
and I think it's going to be pretty good. I got a tenth indicator on there. Let's see. Hope you don't have too much uh, glare or anything on that thing. Okay. Let's get that on zero. Whoop. there. It's touchy. <laughs> I think that's about as good as I can get it. Okay, I'm just got about the regular length uh, handle on here. I'm going to go ahead and start snugging it. Okay, that's pretty darn tight. And it's at... Uh, just half a tenth under a thousandth. I'm going to back it off. And it changed a little bit. Okay, try it again. Well, it's just uh, two tenths over a thousand that time. Yeah, it returned to zero pretty good. I'll hit it one more time. Yeah, that's uh, one thousandths and three tenths. So that's how much deflection will happen. And I have a, just a chunk of steel lifted up towards the top of the jaws. If it was something longer, it would probably uh, show a little bit more deflection. Okay, it's just something to be aware of. And um, this machine, well, I'll just be doing pretty light stuff with with the arbor, but uh, it's a five horsepower machine and that's a 50 taper. So uh, with a cutter directly out of the spindle, um, it'll have a lot of power, even drilling and things like that. Okay, I will be back.